Fire in the lift lighter pit barrel hole. Let's cook a brisket. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome once again to my backyard. What I got going on for you today is, well, let me tell you before I start, this is a barbecue pit boys recipe. Bob Algren and the barbecue pit boys, you know all about the barbecue pit boys. And what I got here is a beef brisket flat cut, blade tenderized, I don't know what that means, aged beef from Wild Fork Foods. I love Wild Fork Foods. I buy a lot of my meat there. They're unreal, unbelievable. First thing I'm going to do is insert a thermometer into the thickest part of the brisket. I'm going to unplug it to make it easier to get it in my pit barrel. And uh, let's get that thermometer in there first thing into the thickest part of the beef brisket. This is going to be a long, low and slow process to cook this brisket and I know this is not a packer brisket it's just a little piece of flat but it's gonna be good it's gonna be so good you'll see let me uh, let me move this aside for a second I got it on the grate to make it easier to handle I got a bowl right here here's my bowl let me get that where you can see it without knocking everything off I got a bowl I've got some Rotel well first let's put the onions on there we can put the onions on there we got some onions that I sliced up that we're gonna throw on top of that brisket like this. This is like a classic uh, oven style brisket that your, your mother would make or your grandmother would make something like this. We got some onions on there. I've also got some garlic. You know, the barbecue pit boys forgot to put garlic in their recipe. I've got about four cloves of garlic that I'm gonna dump in there. And some more onions, won't hurt a thing in the bottom of the pan. Anyway, I've got some Rotel tomatoes. These are the best things going. I use these when I make chili. Rotel tomatoes or green chilies. And they're awesome. This is the most awesome stuff you can get right here. Diced tomatoes and the, also the juice from the can, the whole can. This is a uh, 28 ounce can. And then I've got some barbecue sauce. Sweet Baby Ray's Hickory and Brown Sugar Barbecue Sauce. So gonna put the whole the whole uh, thing of barbecue sauce in there. What is that? I forgot to bring something to stir with. How do you like that? I don't need it. It'll be fine. I'll use the, I'll use the barbecue sauce can to stir the, the mixture. This is my braising liquid. We're going to braise this brisket. It's going to take hours to cook. So we got the whole thing of barbecue sauce in there. And I can use my knife. I got some brown sugar. Whoop! I just dropped it. Ah! Ow, oh, brown sugar! How come you taste so good? Uh oh. Food police are gonna get me for singing. Better, better shut up. Okay, let's get some brown sugar in there. About, I don't know, a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. If I can get it out of the bag somehow. There you go, brown sugar. Good enough. Let's use a knife to stir it. That's what the barbecue pit boys do. Done it? Stir that up with a knife. Barbecue sauce, brown sugar, and tomatoes so far is what it's in there. I gotta get the rest of that sauce out of that bottle. Yes, sir. We're not done, not by a long shot. We got lots more to do. And then we gotta get this in the pit barrel and get it cooking, because it's gonna take hours to cook. Okay, I got as much sauce out of there as I can get, I think. All right, so we got the brown sugar, the uh, tomatoes, and the barbecue sauce in there. So what we can do now is, we can bring this back over and pour this mixture right on top of that. Right on top of the brisket, look at that. It looks good enough to eat already, doesn't it? But we're not done, let me tell you what. What we gotta do now is, oh, you know what I forgot? I completely forgot to put the SPG on there to season it. So it's never too late, I guess. We'll put some SPG right on top. I should have put that on the meat, but I messed up. Plain and simple, I screwed up. Yeah, let's get that on there. Okay, now we got one more thing we gotta do. 
And for that, I need a bottle opener. Got one right here. I got some, got a beer. I'm gonna put a whole uh, beer in there. This is our brazing liquid. So we're gonna dump some beer in there. Dump a beer in there. My pan may not be big enough, but it's fine. As long as it doesn't overflow, I guess. There we go. Got almost that whole bottle of beer in there. If it was cold, I would take a taste of it, but it's not, <laughs> so I won't. Okay. I'm gonna put some other stuff in there later on after that gets cooking. I'm gonna get that in the pit barrel right now, and I gotta cover it with foil and get it cooking, because it's gonna take a long time. When it gets to 160 degrees, we're gonna come back and add some more things to it and make sure we got plenty of braising liquid in there. And we're just gonna let that cook low and slow a long, long time. So uh, stay tuned. Brisket is in the pit barrel. We're gonna cook it till we get to 160 degrees internal temperature. Then we're gonna add some veggies to make this a one pot meal. And you're gonna see the most awesome brisket you've ever seen. So stay tuned. Brisket is up to 160 degrees. It's time to pop in and take a look at what we got going on here. Oh man, does that look good. How does that look? Not too shabby, let me tell you what. But let me show you what we're gonna do now. We got some potatoes and carrots we're gonna drop in there. Uh, just these little potatoes. Looks like we got plenty of uh, braising liquid from the fat from the brisket. So we're not too worried about that. We're gonna drop in some potatoes and carrots to make this a truly a one pot meal, this brisket. Don't that look good enough already to eat, but it's only at 160 degrees. And we really need it to come up to about 205 degrees so that it'll be fork tender. But anyway, let's get some carrots and potatoes in there. I don't want to overflow my pan. I get as much as I can in there. That's looking good, isn't it? What do you think about that? All right. Potatoes and carrots my favorite, two of my favorite root vegetables. We're gonna put the cover back on that and let it keep going until we get to 205 to 210 degrees internal. Then we'll have a, we'll have a feast. We'll have something to eat and have a beer, so stay tuned. Uh, the brisket is done. There's the Frosty Root Boy mug. Here's today's beer, a West Coast Shandy from Orange Avenue Shandy Coronado Brewing Company, ale with orange and honey. That sounds good to me, Rob. I know you might not like it, but I tell you what, I think I'll like it. Let me get some of this in my glass so we can sniff it. It's a very pale ale. I'm hoping, ah, oh, it foamed up way too much, way too much, but I didn't spill any. I got that going for me. I'm hoping my, uh, my uh, brisket, which I think is at 205 degrees, it should be fork tender, but I guess it's not. So we're probably gonna have to not take a knife and to plate that up, I'll probably have to cut some of it. Anyway, let's take a sniff of that, Rob. I botched a pour, didn't I? Anyway, I'm hoping to smell oranges. And I do, I smell the oranges in that, orange and honey. Let's take a sip of that. Excellent. Beautiful. Oranges and honey. You can really taste it in that uh, stuff right there. Let me plate up some of this uh, some of this brisket. It's at 205 degrees. It should have been like fork tender, but for some reason it's not. I'm going to uh, take a knife and cut off some of it. Get it in my plate. It's a little tough. I don't know. I don't know why it is. It's still beautiful though. Now let's get that cut up right there. Got a big piece of fat on there. Oh yeah. Still, brisket is brisket no matter what you do. Let's get some in a plate. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh, oh a good beer. <laughs> 
some biscuit in a plate and get some of that uh, some of those veggies in there some of that tomato and uh, potato and uh, carrots in my plate get me a piece of that brisket without all that fat on it I think let me uh, try trimming that fat off of there there we go it's more like it it's a lot of fat some of that uh, other stuff on there yeah that's not too bad not too shabby take another slice of brisket I needed a bigger fork and didn't bring one oh, goodness there's a slice I can try let's get some more of that other stuff in there that carrot and uh, stuff that looks good doesn't it doesn't that look good let me uh, get this out of the way I'm a little disappointed with the uh, tenderness of the brisket, but that's okay. There's a big chunk of fat right there. I'm gonna dump that out of there. I'm sure it tastes good. Let me get a, a napkin from my mouth. Ah, oh, to wipe off my plate. I might take another picture. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's looking pretty darn good right there. Let me uh, zoom in on that. Let me take another photo of that. Uh, zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, that's looking. Let's put that can up there. All right, that plate is as pale as that. Uh, I mean, the uh, can is as pale as the ale. Let me wipe some of that. Let me give us that brisket in my mouth. I know it's going to taste good. Oh yeah, it's a little chewy. I'll tell you what though, the potatoes and stuff, mmm, delicious. Mmm, 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 excellent. Yeah, the brisket, I don't know. Not as tender as I would have liked, but it tastes good. Delicious. Maybe it needs to cook more, I don't know. But anyway, there you go, babies. That's my video. The uh, Pit Barrel Braised Biscuit. Brisket. I tell you, I've been waiting all day to eat. And now, <laughs> now it's time to eat. It's time to get some of this in my mouth. It's a great recipe from the Barbecue Pit Boys, Bob Algren and the Barbecue Pit Boys. You all know him. If you decide to do this, I recommend that you let it go till 210 degrees internal. It would have come apart better, I think. But I got impatient. I couldn't wait to eat. Anyway, that's my video, babies. We'll see you next week, okay? Bye.